Hello students, today we will be discussing about the concept of training and development, the importance of training and development in an organization and also the various types of uh, training and development programs available for the employees. So let's begin. These are some of the definitions of training given by various scholars and from these definitions we come to know that training is actually a systematic and a planned process which has its organizational purpose you know, to impart and provide learning experiences that will bring about improvement in an employee and enable him to make his contribution in greater measure for the organization. Training is an organized procedure for increasing the knowledge and skill of people for a specific purpose. The trainees after completion of the training program will acquire new skill, technical knowledge, problem solving ability and so on. It also gives them a sense of awareness of the various rules and procedures and also guide their behavior in an organization. Training will also improve the performance of employees on present job as well as prepare them for taking up new assignments in the future. Now next we will discuss about the characteristics or nature of training program. Training is an act of increasing the knowledge skills of an employee for doing a particular job so after a trainee or an employee completes his training program he will learn about the rules and regulations of the organization the various technical know-hows of the organization it is a continuous process training um, is a continuous process because the fast changing technological development makes the knowledge of employees obsolete after a certain period of time. So therefore they require constant training to cope up with the needs of the job. It involves changing of skills, knowledge, attitudes or social behavior. So after a trainee goes through the training program, there, there will be certain changes certain visible changes in his social behavior, his knowledge, attitudes and skills. It is an essential part of management development and it focuses attention on the current job and it is very job specific. It is concerned with uh, because training is concerned with increasing the knowledge and skills which is required for a particular job. So these are certain needs and objectives of a training program. The first uh, need or objective of the training program is employee development. Training program works for the overall development of an employee because it training program will help a manager or an employer to firstly locate the talent in the employees and then develop it to the maximum. The training programs will also uh, provide an opportunity to the employees to showcase their talents. Next important objective or needs of a training program is promotion within the organization or filling up the vacant positions from within the organization because sometimes it may not be possible for the management to fill in some important work positions from outside due to various reasons in such conditions the training programs which aims at improving the skills of the present employees will help the organizations to fill in these vacant positions from within the organization next important uh, objective of or of the training program is easy adaptability due to the various technological advancement uh, new approach to work is required therefore the methods of work are constantly cha undergoing changes 
and this will necessitate the adaptability of workers to changing work environment now a trained worker can be more adaptable to change than an untrained work one next is less wastage an untrained worker may waste more materials damage machines and equipments and may cause accidents accidents generally occur due to a deficiency in the operator and not in the machine in in most cases so a trained worker will know the art of operating the machines properly so therefore he will cause less wastage and damage the last needs or objectives of a training program is less supervision the degree of su of supervision required for a trained worker will be less in comparison to an untrained worker the trained worker will not be dependent upon the supervisor for minute details and may, he may carry on his work by himself on the other hand an untrained worker will need constant watch and he will require the guidance of the supervisor very often so next we will discuss about the training process so determining the training needs is the first and foremost step in the training program so the organization will firstly analyze what type of training is required Uh, for whom it is required is it for the existing employees or the new employees so these uh, these are some of the things that the employ employers need to uh, determine beforehand next uh, they will have to set the organ uh, train training goals and objectives so once the specific training needs have been determined we have to set the goals and objectives of, of training for filling up these needs that have been determined previously so the objectives of training are to help an employee to improve performance on his present job and long range objectives can be to guide the qualified employees in preparation for positions involving greater responsibilities or future promotional opportunities next we have to prepare the training budget that is allocation of funds for various training activities then we have to decide about the training venue so this decision will be dependent on the type of training to be given for instance if it is the on the job training program then the venue naturally is the plant itself in case of off the job training program the training through uh, external sources and the venue has to be somewhat away from the trainee's working environment then next the organization will have to decide about the methods and techniques to be deployed in training so the training methods and techniques vary from an organized system of learning to more systematic methods of instruction the factors that generally matter in the selection of choice or choice of a particular method or technique for training are the depth of knowledge nature of skills called for in particular jobs to be filled the background of the trainees their capacities and potentials then the various kinds of operative problems that might be confronted by the organization then consideration of various facilities by way of cost time material equipment etc then available for particular training or or for particular situation and then also the number of persons to be trained and developed then lastly after all these um, you know uh, after all these steps the last step that is to be um, taken up is determining the methods of evaluation of training program 
so evaluating training is fundamentally concerned with the extent of achievement of objectives as set out in the training plan it is the measurement of the effectiveness of performance after training and collecting useful feedback for future training we can evaluate the training program by judging and measuring reactions of participants assessing and measuring how far the learning has been gainful and effective and evaluating new and different attitudinal and behavioral changes in the performance of the employees or the trainees measuring results or changes in terms of cost quality and production now let's discuss about the various training methods so the training methods or techniques can be divided into two categories first one is the on the job training and next one is the off the job training now on the job training programs or methods are those uh, methods which wherein the trainees are provided training uh, within the work premise during their actual job and on the other hand the off the job training methods are those methods which are not uh, provided in the original work premise uh, they are situated uh, far away from the work environment so the first on the job training program or method is job instruction training it is basically used to teach the workers how to do their current job effectively and efficiently so first of all the trainee receives an overview of the job its purposes and desired outcomes with a clear focus on the relevance of the training program then the trainer demonstrates the job in order to give the employee the right way of doing the job then the trainee is asked to copy the trainer's demonstration the demonstration by the trainer and the practice by the trainer are repeated till the trainee masters the right way of performing the job and then finally the employee does the job independently without the supervision of the trainer next on the job training method is coaching it is a kind of daily training and feedback given to the employees by their immediate supervisors it involves a continuous process of learning by doing coaching involves direct personal instructions and guidance usually with extensive demonstration therefore it has the advantage of increased motivation for the trainee as well as minimization of the problem of transfer from theory to practice next on the job training method is mentoring in mentoring a senior person in the organization assumes the responsibility for training and grooming of a junior person a mentor will act as a teacher a guide a counselor a supporter a facilitator for the junior person so the basic objective of mentoring will be to help an employee gain maturity and effectiveness and get to know the organization better with the help of this with the help of his senior mentoring can take place both at formal and informal levels depending on the prevailing work culture and commitment from the management a good mentor has to listen to the mentee and understand him challenge his intellect and stimulate the learning process build self confidence in the junior employee teach him by examples the mentor will act as a role model will share his good and bad experience in the organization and will always encourage the junior employee to work for the organization next is position rotation position rotation is the expansion of the background of the trainee in the organization 
if the trainee is rotated periodically from one job to another he acquires a general background he understands the larger organizational perspective and different functional areas he attains a better sense of his own career objectives and interest rotation allows the trainees to build rapport with large number of individuals within the organization as well as facilitate future cooperation among departments in position rotation the productive work suffers because of disruptions caused by such changes as specialization advances rotation becomes less useful as few people have the technical knowledge and skills to move from one functional area to another then next on the job training method is apprenticeship apprenticeship is a structured process by which people become skilled workers through a combination of classroom instructions as well as on the job training it is widely used to train individuals for many occupations many organizations have an ap- apprenticeship laws with supervised plans for such training now these are some of the off the job training method methods first one is the vestibule training in this method a training center is set up which is known as the vestibule training center in which the actual job conditions are duplicated that means the equipments or the materials that will be utilized in the training programs are uh, are similar to the actual equipments and materials that the trainees will be using in their actual job environment the expert trainers are employed to provide training with the help of equipments and machines which are identical with those at the workplace this method of training is used primarily when large number of employees must be trained quickly and as needed as a result of expansion of business activities next is the classroom training classroom training is the traditional way of education which places the trainee in a classroom the main uh, aim of classroom training is to take the man away from his working environment and to mix with men in a similar position to his own and as a result bring about change in his attitude and point of view and also make him capable of looking at problems differently next is conferences conferences um in conferences the participants pool their ideas and experiences to arrive at improved methods of dealing with the problems it may include buzz sessions that divide the conference into small groups for intensive discussions then these groups report back their conclusions or questions to the whole conference the conference method allows the trainees to look at problems from a broader angle then we have role play role playing is a method of human interaction that involves realistic behavior in an imaginary situation role playing will involve action doing and practice the trainees play the role of certain character characters example the different position holders in the organization by role playing a trainee can broaden his experience by trying different approaches or roles while in actual practice he often has only one role to play next is the case study method in case study method what happens is the trainees are given a particular case to solve a real life example or a real life case um, is given to the employees and they are asked to solve the case solve the issue in the training program 
because sometimes what happens is the theories that we learn in um, the classroom trainings are quite different from the practical world so therefore in order to make the employees aware of the practical issues or uh, the issues or the um, problems or the challenges they might face in the practical uh, work environment in order to solve those the employees are, or the trainees are provided with case study training methods next is management games in this type of training method the employees are um, made to play games related to managerial uh, ma related to the organization related to the management